Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris Chiz, Project Director with the Western Flyer Foundation. And it's amazing how much great work's been getting done in the last couple of weeks. They've got the keel rolled underneath the boat, bolted up permanently, and Greg got the rudder post cut out and it's installed permanently. Tim and Ryan are about halfway done installing stern lifts, and overall the project's just moving along beautifully. But I've been in Kentucky for about a week now. I've been cutting down oak trees and milling out oak for the reframing of the Western Flyer, and I'll be making a video of that in the near future. But in this episode, let's just catch up with the project. Thanks again for watching. Once all of the stern lift timbers were cut out and fared, the rabbit could be laid out on the bottom face of the rim log. The rabbit is a pretty tough joint to explain, but it's made up of three separate lines, the rabbit line, the back rabbit line, and the bearding line. These three lines are connected down into the face of the timber to allow the planking to transition smoothly from the hull to one of the center line timbers like the keel, the stem, or in our case, the bottom side of this rim log. Traditionally, the rabbit would be cut in using a mallet and a chisel, but after a lot of years of trial and error, we've all decided that the Air 90 with a chainsaw wheel is the best and fastest way to remove a lot of material quickly. After the rabbit has been cut, the process of permanently installing the stern can begin. Once the rim log has been installed and bolted into place, the remaining lifts will be stacked on top of it, one at a time, bedded in red lead and lagged together. After all the timbers are in place, they will ultimately be through bolted using 3 quarter inch bronze rod. At each vertical joint in the stern, a three-quarter inch hole will be drilled, allowing a stopwater to be put into place. And it's exactly how it sounds. A cedar dowel is pounded into place, and as water hits it, it swells up, and it stops the water from entering the boat. Visitors to the boatyard often ask, what's the orange paint? It's red lead and we get it from Kirby's, North America's last great paint store in New England. Traditionally used as a vapor barrier and to help prevent the spread of rot from timber to timber.
Tim and Ryan were working on the stern, Greg was cutting out and installing a new stern post. Starting with a 14 by 18 inch Purple Heart timber, he cut tenons on both ends, one beneath the top of the keel and the other to run up into the bottom side of the horn timber. Before the rudder post was installed, they bore the hole for the propeller shaft using the milling machine. Greg has moved on from the flyer for the summer to go fishing, so Lachlan has stepped in to finish the stern post knee. Lachlan's skills hardly match his age. He is a recent graduate of the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building, and at 21, he is the youngest shipwright working in Port Townsend. But you'd never know that. His skills far exceed his age. Also over the last few weeks, that 64-foot outer keel was rolled underneath the flyer, jacked up into place using bottle jacks, and bolted in permanently using bronze rod. And now that the keel is installed, Pete will start in on the stem repairs, and over the coming weeks he will replace the stem, the stem knee, and the lower outer stem, all using Purple Heart Timbers. And thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I'm really enjoying making the videos and sharing the project with everybody. If you're enjoying watching them, why don't you consider subscribing?